When you work with a real estate agent, you automatically assume they have your best interests in mind. But as the saying goes, buyer beware. In many instances, your broker, the broker your agent has a contract with, can be working for both sides of the sale, and getting you the best deal may not be their priority. Joining us now from Washington for a closer look at conflicts of interest among brokers is Stephen Israel. He's president of the Buyer's Edge Company. Hey, Stephen, welcome. Hi, Jerry. How are you doing? Good today. Glad you're Good. here to explain Good. some of these conflicts. When you say conflicts of interest, what do you mean? Well, Jerry, the industry is set up so that most of the brokers who work in the industry um, represent both sides of the transactions. Not only do they have listing agents who are listing properties for sale and therefore representing the sellers, but they also have people in their office who may be representing a buyer on the same transaction. And we both should people are that. I'm sorry, but both people are then working for that broker. Right. So the broker of that office has a very distinct conflict of interest where they're really signed up at that point to get the seller the highest price on the best terms for their property. And also they uh, have a contract now with a buyer to get the buyer the lowest price on the best terms for the property. And we should explain here that agents tend to work for a broker in a single office. Many agents, they can represent both sides of the equation here. Here's what I want to know, Stephen. Do these agents talk amongst themselves? For example, if I'm a buyer and I tell my agent, you know, hey, I think we're going to spend, you know, X, Y, Z on this house. We're willing to go as high, and I give them a number. Will they pass that on to the agent that's uh, working on the sell side? Well, I mean, obviously, if you have an agency relationship with your um, with the client, then that agent is not. They have a fiduciary duty in some states, not in all states. But they have a duty to protect the client's interest. Um, but that's very difficult in a small office where you have two people, one representing the buyer, one representing the seller. Their offices or their desks are right next to each other. They sit through the same office meetings. Um, everybody pretty much knows what's going on in most real estate right. offices with, you know, if someone's right. going through a divorce or if there's a problem with a sale. Um, it's pretty much common knowledge. Lots of information gets passed along. What about sure. another kind of conflict, though? Agents work on commission. So the more you pay for that house, the better off they are. That might not be in your best interest. Right. I think that, you know, I think that the industry has always been structured on a commission basis. There are lots of companies now that are doing fee-for-service type transactions. Uh -huh. uh, it's certainly an interesting um, change in the industry, and more and more people are, are, are exploring it. Um, but the fact of the matter is, on most transactions, um, the negotiating that goes on might, you know, might negotiate over ten or twenty thousand dollars. The agents cut and what they actually make out of the difference in a $10,000 swing on most transactions, you know, may be just a couple of hundred dollars. So oftentimes I think that that's not as big a conflict as most people perceive it as. So big. how do I avoid conflicts, though? If I'm, if, I'm, if I'm determined not to get myself in a situation where I'm not being well represented, what do I do to avoid the conflict? Well, right now there are a couple of options. If you're a buyer, uh, there are exclusive buyer brokerage firms that are operating throughout the country now. Uh, there's the National Association of Exclusive Buyers Agents that's at right. NABA.org, um, NAEBA.org. Yeah, can refer let me interrupt you on. here. Right, yeah. let me interrupt you here. And they exclusively represent buyer, buyers. That's their Correct. claim to fame. Very interesting well, organization. But let me interrupt you here, right. Stephen. There aren't that many of them. I may right. live in a place where right. there are no exclusive buyer's agents. Right. Right. Unfortunately, that's the case. And there are, as to my knowledge, there are very few companies nationally that, rep that exclusively represent sellers. The fact of the matter is that there are some. And if you're fortunate enough to have someone good in your jurisdiction who exclusively represents buyers, and the point being that their company exclusively represents buyers, not that it's an agent who represents buyers in a company that does both. Right. But, you know, if you're fortunate enough to have that option, that's great. If not, then you have to be very careful and understand the terms um, with which you're entering into a contract. And you should very be, people should be very careful to understand what their agency contract agreement says and that what happens to them when the when the company that they're working with is representing both sides of the transaction absolutely important yeah. uh, and and you have to know the terms of the agreement if i'm in a situation right. though where i can't pick up an exclusive buyer's agent how do i make sure right. that that agent is working on my behalf 
Well, I think that you have to ask a lot of questions at the beginning, and, and our, uh, you know, our position is, is that the, the most professional agents in, um, in the business do really are very careful, um, and most agents do a very good job at delineating you know, the, the, the potential conflicts for their clients, and they, you know, most people are very careful, and I think that, um, I think that at the outset, that seeking out someone in the industry who's not necessarily someone with tons of experience, but somebody who's very professional uh, in their approach to the business and has a very good response um, when you ask them the questions about what happens with, in these sp specific instances where there is a conflict, how am I going to be sure that I'm, my interests are going to be represented? Um, it, it's a difficult question to answer when you ask, what will the broker do if a tree hits the house before settlement. Um, you now have a contract and the broker now represents the seller and in theory represents the buyer. It's a very interesting scenario. And so very, very, very difficult to solve too. too. Stephen Israel sure. from yeah. Buyer's Edge, thanks so much.